Why, hello and welcome to my video. I am Sandy Alnock and I want to say I appreciate your indulgence for my rather silly intro to this video. I have so much chicken stuff. I collected chickens for a lot of years. I did get rid of a lot of it when I did a big house cleaning and purge and everything last year, but obviously I have not gotten rid of all of it. And since today happens to be Dance Like a Chicken Day, I had to draw a chicken and that led to the intro. So anyway, thank you for putting up with that nonsense. I surprisingly have a serious video, even though the subject is rather silly, a dancing chicken, because I wanted to talk about blending and feathering with alcohol markers. I love drawing birds of any kind. I've drawn lots of birds in my day. I haven't drawn this kind of a chicken and in alcohol markers before, but I know enough about drawing feathers that I wanted to really apply some of the knowledge that I have about feathers to like a rather spectacular chicken piece. The section that I'm working on right now, the head is not requiring any feathering just because it's got a lot of texture in it and you can cover up any bad blending when you've got texture on top. But when it comes to things like laying down a transition of color under the neck here, doing some feathering with your markers really helps. So what you're doing to feather is lay the marker down and lift up as you get to the end of the stroke. Now you might experience with small images or a very small area like this one that you just end up with a point. And that is like to be expected. It's really difficult to get any kind of a long transition when you're talking about a very short distance for your marker to travel. And in a few minutes, I'll show you how it can change when you're doing actually a long stroke versus something short like this. If you're working with short strokes, it's better to have multiple colors. So you start with a, a dark and then a medium and a light and layer them over top of each other repeatedly in order to get a blend. Now here, I didn't worry about getting a really smooth blend because I was gonna draw all kinds of feather details on top. So I put these kind of half circles underneath some of the feathers, put some shading under them, then added some shading to each of the feathers coming down from the top. But in each of these strokes, I'm still lifting up at the end. If when you're using alcohol markers or any other kind of markers, I guess for that matter, if you're ending up with like a chunky mark, like a flat horizontal chunky spot, then that's because you're not lifting at the end. You're just letting the marker stop. And when the marker just comes to a stop, it lays down extra ink at the place where it stops because usually you, you pause for just a fraction of a second there and then you get that big fat blob at the end. That fat blob is something when you're trying to blend, you're gonna continue to fight because you've got extra color there. You don't have a lighter transition. When you have these points, you end up having less overall color in the whole area so that it's gonna be easier when you come in with another color to do some blending. But again, here it doesn't matter a whole lot. I did add some blending, some shading, some feathering onto some of those individual feathers, but it didn't matter because of the detail. This group of feathers is gonna be lighter and I don't want as much detail. So I'm making sure that both ends of my stroke, both the beginning and the end, have no chunky end on them. I'm not laying the marker down flat. But this section down below, I wanna have a sharp shadow where those feathers stick out into the light. So I'm laying the marker down and you can see there's more color where I start the stroke because I press down and then as I lift up, there's gonna be less color there. And then you can go over it with other lighter colors to start getting some blending going. But I decided I was gonna go darker in value because in any piece of art, it's the value that matters in getting the look of realism that you want. So I'm just gonna keep darkening some of these areas in order to create what my vision is for this drawing. And it's kind of a crazy vision, so it changes over time. I keep going back and reworking different areas. Now these feathers are more of a pure feather, and you can see when you slow it down, I'm really getting a chance for the marker to lay down at the beginning and then lift up at the edge of the stroke, at the very end of it. And I think of this as a, an airplane analogy. 
if your marker can lay down, touch that tarmac, and then lift up as it gets to the end, it's going to take off and not leave a big old blob of ink at the end. And here I've got a marker that has a little dangly bit at the end, and I decided to use that to get some effects with my my edges on these feathers and get a little bit of detail put into them rather than uh, go change that nib or try to fix it so that it doesn't have that little dangly bit. So sometimes those little things as your marker nibs wear out are helpful to you when you're doing your drawing. It can still feather nicely, but it also gives me look this little kind of edge that I can give to the feathers to give them a, a slightly broken section because they you know, feathers aren't going to be a perfect thing in every single instance. And what makes them look more like feathers is that brokenness. And so I'm going to use some color in addition to those broken lines, but none of it is going to be solid color. It's, I'm not trying to outline the whole thing, just trying to give it a soft broken edge that's going to look like it's flying in the air as the bird is like dancing and flitting those feathers around. Same thing with these feathers. Just look at that nice long line I can get. I can even lift up and repeat that line and keep stretching it. And as I get to the end, I'm just going to lift up, which is going to lighten that. Now, it's much easier to do this with a lighter pen, a lighter color. When you get into darker colors, you're going to see it more. If this were a darker color and I was doing the same strokes with it, you would see the same thing, but it would be more obvious because of the contrast. So practicing this with lighter colors is sometimes going to be more helpful to you as you're learning. When you're trying to get a blend going, have two colors that are just a little bit of distance away from each other, not a really dark with a really light, but you have two colors that are about in the same mid range. And then you can make one of them feather one direction and the other one feather the other direction and you start getting a nice place where the two of them meet. Sometimes you don't even need to go back and do any rework to it. You can just put those strokes down and they automatically start to build up that transition from the darker to the lighter color. And if you're trying to work with two colors that are different from each other, say a purple and a yellow, you need two that are going to be in the same value range in order to get them to work and to blend together. If you have two colors that are both light or both dark or both middle, they're going to have a better chance of some blending. That's why when you start trying to get a three or four color blend going because you need to go from a light to a dark, you just do that in baby steps because you're trying to get those values that are touching each other to be as close to each other as you can, which means you just need more baby steps in between. But here you can just, you know, watch the feathers start to get their dimension because they're changing in value from one end to the other. I did the very same thing on the other wing flying out in the other direction. And this whole time I was sort of planning what in my brain I wanted to do with this drawing when it gets finished because this is part one of this piece and I'll hopefully be bringing you part two on Saturday. If I don't come with part two on Saturday, then it means I ruined it. So we're going to hope that that was not ruined. The plan is to add a disco ball, a whole disco scene in behind this chicken. Now, I don't know how you draw a disco ball. I haven't done that before. I did find my disco ball in the garage. I have a garage full of like prop things and I found that. I found my chicken hats. I found all kinds of stuff out there and I'm going to be studying my disco ball and lighting it up in a dark room so I can start to see how you make a disco ball. I don't know how to do that but it's the same process that I go through when I'm learning how to draw birds. I haven't drawn drawn roosters like this before. This is my first time drawing this particular kind of thing in alcohol markers, but I've drawn enough birds throughout my lifetime that I can kind of figure out how you make feathers. Now, whether you're drawing your own drawing of a bird and doing the kind of thing that I'm doing, or if you have downloaded a picture or bought a stamp that has a bird in it and you're trying to make feathers, it's the same process. You can go and look at birds online. Go look at the breed of bird that you're coloring. 
whatever it is that you're drawing, find a reference for it and study it and look at what the values are. That's going to help you to choose colors. It's going to help you to know where to put your transitions of color. And you might need a couple practice pieces in order to do that. I'm hoping this is not a practice piece that I will have to draw again because I don't want to draw this chicken again. But I'm, I'm excited to get to that background because I've never drawn a disco ball and I want to do that. I'm going to be putting, I hope, this is the other part of the plan. I'm going to put a big black background behind it using some airbrush. And then I'm thinking maybe a disco flooring, something lit up underneath of him, you know, something shiny, reflective. I'm not really sure what that's going to look like, but I have a lot of research to do this week. I'm going to be busy. So that is generally my process when I'm going to work on a drawing like this. So if you've thought before that everything just comes out like magic when an artist does it, it usually involves a whole lot more than you might suspect behind the scenes because I'm concocting this scene out of my head and I need to start looking at reference materials and trying to find how I'm going to determine what the values are going to be in this piece, I might have to change some of these values in the wings once I get all that background stuff in. I don't really know what that's going to look like at this point, but I'm trying to plan it in my head so I at least know how I'm going to get there when that time comes. Now, another thing I wanted to mention while I am here is that um, on Saturday, this coming Saturday, we're going to have a Zoom call over an art venture. And if you would like to come and hang out and talk about alcohol markers, I am going to be working on something in alcohol markers. I have to have the chicken done before then. So uh, my second video, part two of this should be out on Saturday, but I'm going to do some other marker coloring. So if you have questions about alcohol markers and you want some help, you want some demonstration of like something you're struggling with, you can send me an email first and let me know what you're struggling with and I can see if I can come up with a plan or just come and ask your questions and we'll talk about it. I might be working in Copics. I might be working in Olo markers. Not really sure. My new set of Olo markers, their new colors are on the way to me. I'm hoping they're going to be here any day so that I can start reworking the hex chart. If you've bought the Olo hex chart before, you'll be able to get the new one like as soon as it comes out without having to repurchase or anything. But I'm also going to be doing some alcohol marker classes coming up soon because of course we have the new, new colors coming from Olo. So if you're a marker user, make sure you are subscribed to my channel because that's going to help you to get more marker content so you can learn more about using your pens. So here I am just working on different types of feathers. I mean, there are so many different consistencies of feathers, different textures of feathers on all different kinds of birds, but chickens, they're just crazy. They have like super fine feathers. And this is a combination of several chickens because I was trying to find anything in the position I'm looking for, but this is not a natural position <laughs> for a chicken. So I'm making it up. I'm just kind of fussing with it. And by the time I had the dark background, I'm hoping it won't look nearly as awkward as it's kind of feeling right now. But there's a ton of drawings that go through this awkward stage. So I'm just going to have faith that it's all going to work. Because another thing I'd love for this to do if it comes out well is to enter this into the Copic Award contest that they do every year. And see if, if this appeals to anybody over at Copic because it's just so crazy. It's just nuts. So here I'm trying to add in some more gray colors in here so that the tan colors don't look quite so bright. I want to desaturate them a bit. And yeah, I added a tail for him and he's done. At least that chicken part, the rooster part. I should call him a rooster, not a chicken. So make sure you're subscribed. Saturday, crossing my fingers, I'm going to have the disco ball background for you and I will see you then. And be sure to pop into the Zoom. Go to Art Venture, sign up over there, and go to the Events tab, and you can find out what time it is in your zone for the Zoom call. All right, that's it for me. I will see you very soon with a disco ball, I hope. Ta-ta for now. Go create something every day. Bye-bye.